And so they're going to close those two plants, which leaves a lot of transmission. And Montana said, we're going into the export business. We're going to produce, over a few years, 5,000 megawatts of power and ship it all to the West Coast. So wind is, you know, I suspect the price now is even lower, like I said. So, so wind, you know, hydropower is simply not going to be able to compete. Here's solar costs, starting out at 161 and 188 rather, and now they're down to 38. And again, I, if I update that, a lot of these slides, I, I mostly use slides that I pick off, you know, the CORE's site or the VPA site or whatever. And so that's the same thing here. And, and so it, the reason uh, in these kinds of slides that I stop where I do basically is, you know, what I can conveniently get a hold of in terms of, of uh, information. Oh, I might add, uh, in terms of solar, one of the arguments that BPA makes is that we have firm power. And sometimes the wind doesn't blow, sometimes the sun doesn't shine. Now, you've heard that line. And I always add, and sometimes the water doesn't blow. But <clears throat> that they have, they say, our power is worth more because it's firm. I mean, it's guaranteed, essentially. Well, the new plant going in west of Pendleton is a combination of wind, solar, and battery. 292 turbines, wind turbines. I forget how many, what size the solar is, but uh, batteries have gone, come down. There's all those other costs going down. It's come down 82% over the same period. So now they can, you know, have some excess power from uh, solar that they can put in that battery. And then the, the argument is solar for some day, naturally. And then the wind often blows more in the evenings and, and early mornings. So, so they can feed that battery, and consequently, they can offer firm power. And we're seeing more and more of that going on. OK. Um, there's a significant problem for Bonneville. They, they have aging assets. And among those uh, are the Snake River dams. And in uh, 2002, in that uh, my juvenile fish mig migration study, they, the Corps said that a um, turbine is good for 35 to 45 years. And then you've got to rebuild it, essentially. And they have a capital budget projection from 2016 to 2030. And there's going to be major rehab at um, uh, McHenry, for example. And, and uh, let's see, I think one other dam, I don't recall just which right now. And there's no money in that capital budget for any major rehab work on the North State. I mean, there's like 2 million a year, 2.8 million a year, 3. You know, that doesn't, that's band aids. Uh, to rehab a turbine, uh, the Nary has a budget of um, 42 million per turbine. They are doing uh, redoing a couple of turbines in um, uh, Ice Harbor. It's the oldest ones, and so they're essentially they're going to be up to snuff. But the, the other 22 in the Los Angeles dams are aging, and here's 2030, and. Um, I'm, well, I know, let me back up a second. So here, if we look at uh, from 2030, one, this, this, uh, these dams are over their useful life. These are way over their useful life. Um, all the dams except Ice Harbor have and basically run out. I mean, they're, it's an engine with 300,000, it's a Toyota with 300,000 miles. Well, that's not run out of a Toyota. Anyway, but you know about that. I mean, and so here's the issue uh, to rehab in today's dollars, to rehab the Snake River dams cost would be about a billion in today's pricing. So now fast forward to 2030, and you haven't started any rehab work on these dams. Some of them are over 60 years old by now, and they're not going to last. And what's, what's, to me, what's really unfortunate is that 
I am completely convinced that the, the turbines in the Lower Snake River dams will never be rehabbed. There's no money till you know 20, at least 2030, uh, and it takes. Like, to do, redo the, the uh, turbines at uh, McNary, uh, it's going to take seven years. So start in 2030, get some money for the lower Snicker dams, and you know, by 2040, we got turbines in seven years old, and they're not going to last that long. So it's kind of, to me, it's like, if you're not going to rehab those dams, let's shut them down now and save our salmon. You know, yeah. that's, so, yeah. Is the billion dollars to rehab her dam, or for all of them? No, that's for all the summer okay. dam. Again, I, I use forty-two million, you know, as a, as a, you know, I mean, I don't, I couldn't stay. That's exactly, you yeah. know, and all of these things. By the way, um, I'm trying to present a, a big picture for you to understand. So somebody might say, oh, well, uh, you know, there's a dam there you got wrong. Maybe so. I don't think so, <laughs> but, but you know, I always, I like anybody who can point out my errors because I make quick changes. So, okay. Uh, before, oh, I have a, a question on, on that. When a, 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 a hydro turbine is not really a very complicated piece of equipment. I, mean, I, I, know, some, some I know they're big, but they're big. But when they age out like that, I don't know that they just fail. That's kind of what I'm asking. No. That their their efficiency essentially just decreases, and their operational availability decreases. So it's not like I I, I, I guess I want to know is is when they age out, do they just die, and we don't have the power generation, or we we're, we you know you lose two percent of capacity? Yeah. No. I think when they well they get less efficient, but also the you know, risk goes way up. But, cavitation and those kinds of issues that do shut them down. So you lose some availability, but it's not. Because yeah. I think was the, the Grand Coulee turbines were, they rehabbed a lot of the old ones yes. fairly recently, but they were pretty old when they rehabbed them. Yeah. So. And they're starting in uh, on rehabbing Grand Coulee now uh, for, gosh, I forget how much money. Huge amount. Okay, well, let's talk about fish. Well, actually, let me wrap up a little bit on BPA. This is why we all have a problem. Uh, Bonneville Power is currently $15 billion in debt. $15 billion. It costs huge amounts just to service that debt. They have aging assets that require a lot of capital, uh, which would require expanding their debt. Uh, they um, in fact, recently we're downgraded by Moody's Investment Service to a negative in terms of their bonds. They can't sell bonds, but they get somebody else to sell bonds knowing that it's BPA that backs that company. So, so anyway, they've got you know, all that debt. They've got 24% uh, of their budget goes to fish. Well, fish and game, fish and wildlife, I mean, maybe a little to something else, but mostly fish. 24% of their budget. And so, to me, I mean, if you can think about a private company that is, has a product that has falling prices, and you're saddled with $15 billion in debt, and you have to uh, spend 24% of your whole budget on something that doesn't produce anything for you, and I get good at it, and that 24% isn't working, you know, it's clearly not working then um, I don't see how they can survive. I mean, if they were a private business, they, they would bail. They have to. Okay, Chinook. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what's going on with our fish. And I want to make sure I got the color, colors right of these. Yeah. Um, the light color here represents spring, summer Chinook. The dark color, and this goes to 2018. And let me assure you, it didn't go up. It's not going up this year. I mean, it's uh, it's you know it's going to be down about here. We uh, just got uh, new information from Steve Pettit. Some of you know Steve, and uh, he updates his data every you know every day. I think 
but anyway, as of yesterday, at the end of September, uh, the uh, steelhead uh, was running at, uh, over Bonneville, was running at 21% uh, of 10-year uh, average, 21%. And over Lower Granite, again, comparing September 30th last year to September you know, 30th, uh, same time frame. 13 percent. Um, when I was growing up, I uh, used to like to go down and watch the steelhead climb the ladder at uh, Lewiston Dam. Some people forget there was, or didn't know, there was a dam about four miles up from the mouth on Clearwater, and it was put in for washing the water power to generate electricity, and it was <clears throat> uh, to create a log pond for potlatch forests. And, um, and so the steelhead could seem to manage the salmon good. That's where we should have to win. But anyway, that uh, in 1962, I was, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't a kid anymore, I guess. But anyway, in 1962, um, four, 43,000 uh, big wild bee-run steelhead <coughs> crossed that dam. Last year, 558. Hmm. That gives you an idea. So anyway, here's here's uh, interesting enough. You probably can't read. This is 1962. Oh, and boy, it starts going down, and then it kind of picked up a little. And, and uh, here's 1975. Of course, those are the years of dam construction. And here's where we are now. We're in serious trouble. Here's um, sockeye, same pattern. And 2019, I think I read, and I, again, these numbers just change regularly uh, with, you know, updated, and I keep, I try to update them as I go. But anyway, I, I remember reading at one point, uh, 17 fish have made it back to stand. The average over a five-year period, I think, was 69 fish. So here's where we are, right there. and they're, you know, they about the same power. Any hints on the little peaks? No, I clue on yeah. the good news. Typically, often it's water conditions. You know, in other words, if you get a lot of runoff, you get more going over the spillways and they make it better than going through the turbines, of course, or through the surface collectors. But I, I haven't been able to do that. Okay, here's some important information to understand. Um, here's a graph, and this, well, I'll start out with smolt to adult ratio, a return, smolt to adult return. Everything depends on that. I mean, if there's one concept, you know, that we want to focus on is smolt, how many, how many you know, juvenile fish do you send, and how many do you get back? And so, if you're down here, it's called extinction. And that's less than 1%. Uh, from, from 2 to 6% is various levels of recovery. 2% is just really kind of hanging on by the fins. Okay? Uh, the, uh, everybody seems to agree that in order to, to achieve recovery of these fish, you need from 2% to 6% with a 4% average.